Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Dig In. Today we're going to continue talking about guarding our mind as we are continuing this journey together in living this abundant life that God has called each and every one of us to live. So without further ado, let's continue talking about it. I'm Merari and you're watching Let's Dig In. As we mentioned, we're talking about having a healthy mental life. And we've been talking about ways that we can guard our mind because the way we think and the way we process things in our lives is what guides us in how we live our lives. It's our actions all start right here in our mind. So as you guys remember, last week we started talking about the different ways we can guard our mind. So let's go quickly over the, the main verse that we're looking at, which is 2 Corinthians 10. Um, 10, 4 through 5, which says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So right here is just acknowledging that what we're going through when it comes to our mind isn't something physical. So it's, it's kind of seems a little taboo because it's not something we can see, but it's something on the spiritual realm because we need to be careful of what it is that it's abstract. It's our thoughts type of thing. So the first one that we had mentioned last week was know the word of God. In order to know what it is that's negative or what it is that's wrong, we need to know the word of God. And then of course, when anything has been it gets thrown at us, we need to be able to combat it with God's word in order to overcome whatever it is is being tossed at us. Number two, so that was number one. So know the word of God. Number two was think of what you think about. Sometimes we don't really realize what it is we're thinking about, especially because we're being so bombarded with different things around us. We have the TV, we have the news, video games, um, our phones, uh, like all the different social media platforms that come with all of that. Um, all the different apps that we have all are trying to give us a message and have us in ingrain a message within us. So sometimes we need to realize what it is that we're thinking about, what it is it that we're dedicating time or you know that phrase like living f uh, rent free in our minds like what is it that we're constantly thinking about it, that sometimes we probably put too much thought into it so we need to be aware of what it is that we're thinking about and then of course combat those with what God has already established in his word which of course is thinking about what is beautiful what is pure what is holy unto the Lord so that was number two. So think about what you think about. And then number three was reject blatant falsehoods. So again, the world, even in ourselves of the way we were raised or even ourselves have created these falsehoods within us that sometimes we just believe or it's so ingrained in us that we believe it. But we need to reject those. We need to use God's word or remember what God has already spoken about us and use that to combat all these falsehoods. So the world might tell us like, oh, we're ugly or we're not good enough, we're not worthy. But but God clearly says in his word that we are treasures, we are beautiful, we are worthy and, and that, I mean, worthy for him to die for each and every one of us. So that means we're loved. So all of these different things we need to use to combat all of these different things that try to hinder us and give us that negative thought. So those were the three that we went over last week, which was know the word of God, think about what you think about. And number three, reject blatant falsehoods. So the next two that we're going to be talking about today is speak truth to error. So a lot of the things that we think about can be half true and these need to be held captive, even if they are half true. Um, the wrong parts need to be corrected by the word of God. So what you're doing is bringing that thought to the obedience of Christ and you are correcting it and making it obey Christ. So for instance, let's say um, one of those ones are like, oh, you're never going to be financially free, meaning you're always going to be in debt. Now, yeah, society, <laughs> in today's society, that might be a true, half true, because it is true. Like, especially here in the United States, we tend to collect a lot of debt. Even as a country, it's insane how much money we have or how much money we owe <laughs> kind of thing. So um, 
it might seem like, oh, we never might get out of debt. However, we need to reject that because God's word has established that within him, and as long as we are following God's word, we will be financially free. That even to the point where we are going to, ourselves are going to let or borrow money to others or lend money to others type of thing. So we need to it's, um, correct those different mindsets. So, and of course, this is, can be difficult trying to monitor. It's that same thing with that, the, the number two, which is thinking about what we think about. Um, we need to constantly be monitoring what it is that we're entertaining in our mind and making sure we reject all of those different things. And this can be hard because sometimes when we're thinking, okay, we've rejected one thing, but then like five other things come in our mind. So we need to, it, it is a constant battle basically, but <laughs> with God's help though, we can overcome all of these different things in our lives. So that one's number four. So speak truth to error. So whenever anything, any little thing comes in our mind that tries to like say a false thing about us, we need to automatically stop it right there in its footsteps. Don't entertain it and just reject it and replace it with God's word or a truth of God. So then number five, which I think is one of the bigger ones, is to put on the helmet of salvation, which you're like, what does that even mean? Like figuratively put a helmet on? Like, so no, of course, just like I mentioned earlier, this is not something abstract, like something we can actually, or it is abstract. It's not something that we can actually touch it's not something we can physically see so this is again helmet of salvation is something we're metaphorically putting on our heads kind of thing um ephesians 6 um, 17 tells us put on the helmet of salvation and you will be protected and in other words um, someone else elaborated on this and says rely on jesus as your only defense against the enemy and he will prevent the powers of darkness from bombarding your mind so right there it's not that we stop guarding our thoughts. It just means that we put our trust in Christ to block the enemy. So in other words, instead of just doing it on our own, we are doing it with Jesus Christ. We're doing it with the Holy Spirit in order to combat these thoughts in our minds. So in another words as well, it's like, oh, it's like acknowledging that there is a, a war going on and Jesus is the only one that can protect our mind and is and together with him. We are capable of doing it or of overcoming it because, <laughs> of course, on our own, we could try, but most likely we're not going to succeed. Let's be honest. It's it's a lot of stuff. They're trying to bombard our mind. So with this type of mindset, and it's basically like having a military mindset when we like dress ourselves in this um, in this armor of Christ type of thing. So when we have this military mindset, you know, putting on this helmet of salvation, we reject any thoughts um, that don't align with the word of God. And Christ prevents us from being overwhelmed while making sure nothing harms us. So if we don't engage the battle and stay on alert, Jesus won't protect us. Of course, you know, that's a, uh, what we do when we are meditating, when we're studying his word, that's us staying alert. When we kind of, you know, fall away from that, when we are like, oh, I'll skip today, I'll do it tomorrow type of thing. We are slowly, you know, losing that alertness that, and then that's what causes a lot of things to just creep in. Um, Jesus is the helmet and he protects the enemy's entry into our mind as we monitor our thoughts according to the word of God. As we control our thoughts and trust in Christ, we will have the victory. So as long with the Lord, we have this victory to overcome all of these thoughts and have this healthy spiritual mindset that we are striving for. So then the first things first is that we need to stop lying. And of course, <laughs> you're like, easier said than done sometimes, right? But the, when we lie, what is that doing? I mean, what does the enemy do? What is the number one thing that the, the one, was it John 10, 10 that says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Um, of course. So lie <laughs> right there is something the enemy does. So when we ourselves are lying or even saying these little white lies, that right there is opening the door for the enemy to come in and to just start giving us more lies or just to start feeding us these little falsehoods in our minds. So we need to make sure we don't lie. Um, again, the devil is a liar, so we don't want to give him room for him to start coming into our minds or giving him entry, or even to the other demons out there, giving them entry into our lives. 
So one of the common things that we see is that sometimes when we are confessing our sins, we don't really acknowledge them as sins. We might just say like, oh, we blame others that we have gone astray or we blame others for the, the way we are. But we need to make sure, again, we take responsibility and not... Um, shift the blame on others or, you know, lie saying like, oh, I didn't know type of thing. We just need to acknowledge that we have sinned and confess our sins type of thing. Or if um, whatever it is in your life, um, we want to just confess it to the Lord and help. And with his help, we will overcome all of these things. And then, of course, it will help us to stay humble. It will help us to stay honest and, of course, be protected against all these different things. And then, of course, we need to stay focused. So stay focused on the goal, guys, of what we're trying to achieve. Um, it is the hardest part of this war is our, our flesh's reluctance to fight it. Again, our skin is flesh. Our skin wants to do what the world does. The skin, or yeah, our flesh, I keep saying skin, it sounds kind of odd. But our flesh is the one that wants to do all our des those little desires that we have at the back of our mind. It wants us to sin. However, we need to make sure we stay focused on what it is that we are trying to achieve, which is, you know, be more godly, more Christ-like, to follow Christ and basically put all of those, or like, earthly desires um, on check, keep them on check, basically. Um, so, of course, in order to combat our flesh that constantly wants to sin, what do we do? We need to, again, need to know the word of the Lord. We need to keep our mind in check. We need to reject those falsehoods. I mean, the world is literally turning the truth upside down according to the word, um, and it goes against the word. So we need to know what it is, what is the truth in these all of these different circumstances. So, and one of these different ways, of course, is reading, praying, fasting. Um, one of the biggest one is, um, of all of these is fasting because it weakens the flesh. Of course, we get so hungry <laughs> and that's what literally keeps us going because um, a few days without eating food or even a day without eating food, it puts our sinful nature um it weakens our sinful nature because, you know, we're not feet, we're not eating. So, of course, you know, it weakens the body. But that's good because while you're fasting, you're meditating, you're reading, and that's what's strengthening your mind to overcome all these, these different things. And then strengthening your relationship with the Lord, which is the first month that we had um, that the adults had talked about for the whole month is having that healthy spiritual life. All right, so all of this will help us to overcome these different things. I know I had mentioned last time how my biggest thing is like letting my imaginations take off. I tend to daydream a lot. So, of course, staying in the word is going to help um, me overcome this, of course, help you overcome whatever it is that the issues that maybe you're going through, anxiety. We see a lot of depression right now. We're seeing a lot of, um, uh, I guess, like trying to overly express ourselves i guess in a way <laughs> if that makes any sense i don't want to touch on it too much but um basically right now it's just like saying like we're our own gods type of thing but you know, we all know that that goes against what what the bible says because we cannot serve two masters type of thing I'm not going wanting to go into it too much but there's a lot of things right now that are trying to uh, win the battle of our mind basically trying to make us think in a certain way. So we need to be careful with all of this. We want to make sure we're maturing in Christ and not maturing in what the world is telling us to do. And of course, in order to know what the truth is, we need to be reading our word constantly. All right, so yes. It is going to be a tough battle, but that's because it's a not, it is a, it can affect us spirit, uh, physically, but it is very much spiritually. It's in our minds. It's not something we see, but it's something we definitely think about, guys. So keep looking ahead um, while you're overcoming all these different things. Again, it's through Christ that we overcome all of these things. We have um, Philippians 3.14. 3, 413 sorry, that says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So as long as we have Christ with us, we can overcome all of these different things um, and overcome all these different darknesses and tribulations that want to affect our minds. Because again, that's where true life comes from. The way we live comes from this. So 
Hope you guys found this interesting. I'm going to go over the points again really quickly. So it was number one, know the word of God. Think about what you think about. That was number two. Number three, reject blatant falsehoods. Number four, speak truth to error. And number five, put on the helmet of salvation. So again, this is how we guard our minds. And this is how we move forward in different things and overcome and to start to have a healthy mental life, which is, again, leading us to have that healthy um, life and life in abundance that God has spoken over each and every one of us for you and for me. So let's move forward as a church, as we are growing spiritually, as we're growing physically, mentally, and this journey together, guys. So thank you guys so much for being here with us. Hope you guys found this interesting. And let's continue this conversation. We still have, I think, two more weeks on this. So let's continue this journey of having a healthy mental life. So stay tuned as we continue talking about this more. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. And we guys, we will <laughs> see you guys next week. Bye.